bringing the people behind our food to life. You know, typically I actually do talks to people who don't necessarily know that much about fermentation. And I start out by, you know, just kind of contextualizing fermentation. You know, what is fermentation anyway? And, um, you know, how does it transform food? Um, but I sort of have the idea that like the, you know, self-selected group of people that are, that are showing up at a festival like this, you know, already have a basic idea uh, of what fermentation um, uh, is. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's, so exciting for me to just see the growing, um, uh, you know, I interest in it. Um, and it's funny because like this question just keeps on, you know, kind of coming up. Um, uh, you know, you know, is fermentation a fad? Is it a trend? Um, and you know, I, I mean, I certainly see the like, you know, growing awareness of it and growing, you know, interest in it. Um, you know, and yet I don't think that there's anything faddish about fermented foods and beverages. Um, you know, people have been, you know, very devoted to them for about 10,000 years. Um, you know, most people who live on planet Earth, um, you know, eat and drink products of fermentation every day. Um, you know, according to one scholar's estimate, uh, worldwide, uh, one third of all food that human beings put into their mouths has been uh, transformed by fermentation before they, uh, they, they, they do so. Um, so, I mean, really, like, from my perspective, like, the, 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 you know, the trend isn't really fermentation. I mean, that's just been, like, a fact of, of, of life. I mean, you know, we've all grown up with, you know, bread and cheese and, um, uh, you know, coffee and chocolate. And maybe we didn't grow up with wine and beer, but, you know, we knew it was there for when we got old enough. Um, uh, but... You know, I think that, you know, during the, you know, during the second half of the 20th century, you know, basically in the United States, we got used to the idea that sort of, you know, we've been liberated from food. You know, we can just go to a store and buy everything that we need to, uh, to get us through. And it doesn't really matter where it comes from. Um, you know, it's all sort of being produced in faraway places. And we're sort of lucky that we don't have anything to do with that. And we don't have to have anything to do with that. And I, and I would say that, you know, pretty much, you know, uh, in, in, in more recent decades, I guess we've been seeing the, the high cost of not being connected to our food. That the sort of, you know, centralized production of food commodities comes at a cost of, you know, it's sort of environmental destruction, um, um, you know, food that is nutritionally diminished, it's... Um, um, you know, sort of like loss of economic stability. Uh, and, you know, for, 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 for all of these reasons and more, you know, people have been, or, you know, increasing numbers of people have been interested in reclaiming their food. And, um, you know, the, the, the renewed interest in fermentation is one manifestation of this, but so is the revival of farmers markets and uh, community supported agriculture. Um, and it's sort of a reflection of a desire, um, you know, for people to be closer to the sources of their food, to sort of understand where their food comes from and how it's produced. So, you know, people have always, you know, been devoted to products of fermentation, and yet they've been afraid of bacteria. You know, we've all been indoctrinated, um, you know, since we were little children, to be afraid of bacteria, um, uh, to want to avoid bacteria, to try to kill bacteria, and that's still a very pervasive, um, you know, strain of thinking in, uh, you know, certainly in, a, in American life. I mean, you know, is there anything sexier that a soap manufacturer can write on a container of soap than it kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria? Um, and, you know, that's supposed to make us want to buy it because, of course, we want to kill 100% of bacteria. Um, but, you know, as, as, as things are evolving, as uh, sort of, you know, new methods in science are helping us understand, you know, our own bodies, you know, we're, we're learning that, well, it, actually the situation is much more nuanced than that. You know, the cells of our bodies are outnumbered 10 to 1 by bacteria that we're host to. Um, and these bacteria aren't killing us. You know, in fact, it's these, you know, the 99.9% .9 of bacteria that we can live with perfectly well that are protecting us from the 0.1% of bacteria that can make us sick. And because, you know, there's a, the, the war on bacteria isn't just ideological, it's also a, a chemical warfare. You know, there's the antibacterial soaps, the antibiotic drugs, the, 
um, uh, you know, chlorine in the water. You know, we all have exposure every day to chemicals that kill bacteria. So actually, it's become much more important at the present moment than ever before for people to, you know, be consciously thinking about replenishing, uh, you know, and diversifying bacteria uh, uh, in their gut. And you know, one way people do that is with little capsules. People love little capsules. Um, you know, probiotics, but, um, you know, anything you can get in a little capsule, you can get better from food. And, you know, from my perspective, the big flaw with the sort of probiotic idea is, you know, each capsule has, you know, some strain of, of bacteria. And, you know, many of these strains actually have been, um, uh, you know, sort of studied in clinical trials. And, you know, frankly, nobody's doing clinical trials for sauerkraut. Um, you know, because nobody owns sauerkraut and nobody really has any incentive to invest in clinical trials in, in, uh, of sauerkraut. Um, but, you know, the, the, the little bit of investigation there has been of people who eat varied live culture fermented foods actually suggests that you get far superior bacterial stimulation of your immune system by eating foods that contain varied bacteria than you can from any single strain, no matter how sort of, you know, studied it has, uh, it, it has been. 